Welcome to another Coach Dave Academy Lab Guide in the BMW M4 GT3. Uh, this week is week 9 at Road America for the iRacing IMSA series. Um, without further ado, let's get started. That was the full speed lap uh, you've just watched and I'm now on the replay just at the start finish line about to start the lap that you've just seen uh, just so I can talk you through all the all the breaking points, brake references and things. Um, so just coming down the main straight here towards turn one, we've got these handy cones uh, that I'm looking at. Um, my reference is the second cones with three, uh, but I'm braking slightly before them. So you can see I start braking about here, about a car length or two before. The cones um, at this speed it feels like it's right before the cones like in full speed it's just as you're going past uh, or it feels like just before you go past um, i like to go down to third gear um, and as you can see i'm taking quite a lot of curb here it's actually not necessary to because i think that the track surface is potentially a bit grippier so you can carry just as much speed if you don't take the curb um, but it gives a bit more room for error if you aim for the curb and then if you were slightly wide you you get the tarmac anyway, rather than aiming for the to miss the curb, and then you'd just be wide if you were slightly missed the line. Uh, try to use all of this exit curb. Um, as long as you get back on before the end of the grass, it's perfectly legal. I can see just cutting across it, but there's no off track there. It doesn't really cost me much time. So that's fine. Um, then down for turn two, we're looking at these uh, numbered boards on the side. Um, and my reference is again, it's the two board. You can see I'm breaking just about in line with the two. I mean, from on board, this feels like because the two is quite quite wide away from the car, uh, it feels like it's just after you go past it. So you can see it's already disappeared from my screen, and I'm only just starting to break. Um, but it is in practice just just before the two, uh, just about where this little line is here that's actually in line with the two. Uh, this one's a bit of a weird one. You need to turn in quite early and make sure you get onto this inside curb. Um, just it's a third gear corner, by the way, um, which gives you like nice traction on the exit. But you got to be careful to not run too wide. I find that if you get your, your inside wheels on this curb, it's almost like pulls the car around the corner. So it's really quite a big time gain as opposed to missing the curb. Um, you can't use all of this because. It ends too abruptly, so you wouldn't be able to get back on in time before you touch the the grass. And because it's a bit of a slower speed corner, that would not only give you an off track, but also affect you. You run onto the straight. So I try and get back on just in time um, onto this second straight. 
Um, I'm just staying to the right hand side here just to shorten it a bit. Um, and then as it kinks a bit left, I come slightly away from the right hand side again just to shorten the line a bit. But I like to stay mostly towards the right because that's where I'm going to be breaking uh, for the following corner. For this one again, I'm looking at the two board, uh, but breaking before it, definitely after the three, but before the two. Uh, you can see I've just started to break here approximately halfway between the two and the three boards. Um, not quite on the edge of the track yet, but I'm pointing towards the edge of the track. And as you can see, I'm going to use a bit more of this curb and tarmac runoff here on the entry to widen the corner. Um, this is quite a heavy braking zone down to second gear, so make sure you trail brake effectively. You can see that I'm hard on the brakes here, but as I start to turn in, coming off it quite quickly. Um, just make sure you don't come off too abruptly, because that's how you end up losing the rear. Um, on this occasion, I run slightly wider than optimal, and I get just slightly dip my wheels off here. It's not an off track, but I think you would get better traction if you were slightly... A, I could be a tiny bit tighter on the curb, um, but B, if you want to stay on this first curb rather than dropping off it, just to help your traction up the hill. Um, then coming into this corner, this one's probably the most difficult corner on the track, uh, at least to get right at first, because there's not really... I don't really have a reference for it, but it's also blind... Uh, and like off you go over the camber of the hill uh, right as you want to turn in so I'm breaking here which is just before this bridge very gently because the car's going to go weightless as we go over the top of the hill so if you brake too hard it'll just go straight uh, it's only down one gear to second but the hard part is timing the turn in because it's very easy to miss it by by an inch and you end up really wide because of the fact the car's unweighted as you go over the, the crest uh, but equally it's you don't want to turn in too early uh, so the, the trick really is to just brake nice and gently so that the car can keep can still turn even while you're braking. Um, I'm already off the, the brake here, uh, and down to second gear. Take all of the curb and then use as much of this exit curb as you can without running wide when it ends, as we discussed with one of the previous corners. Um, then this following corner is nearly flat. Uh, I go to fourth just before it. You don't want to take any of the grass. Um, you want to take all of the curb possible. And you've just got to be careful. It's it's a bit bumpy on the curb, and it, it seems to depend on whether you get a nice bounce or not as to whether you'd be able to do it flat. So it's it's more consistent to just do a little lift, as you can see here, just to 70%, 80%, just momentarily, just to make sure that I can stay on the track on the exit. And you can see that I do end up needing to use all of this curb here, so it was the right choice on this occasion. Um, and then heading back across to the right, my reference here again, I'm looking at the two board, but Note that I'm going to be braking significantly before. I think it's more like just after I go past the three. I've just gone past the three and now I'm starting to brake. So it's possibly just before halfway between the two numbers uh, for this one. Down to second gear again for this. Make sure you get this inside curb because as you can see it sort of drops away from the track. Gives you a bit of camber to help you turn just for a second. Um, and then back onto the power hard. This is another one where you can't use all of this exit curb because it ends too abruptly and you wouldn't get back on the track in time before the grass. So again, I just take a little bit of the grass there before I get back on, but get away with it. Uh, then moving across to the left-hand side, open up this long carousel corner. Um, I'm up to fourth gear for this point, and I stay in fourth gear through here. You can see I'm lifting already, but what I'm attempting to do with this corner is I try and take quite a late first apex so that's about my first apex there and I've lifted uh, to make sure I get in for this point and then you want to let the car drift out just a bit maybe your car's width that it's maximum not even that half a car's width and then as it's starting to come back towards the inside again for a second apex that's when you can get on the power because with this car it's got enough aerodynamic grip that you can rely on that um, and get on the power quite early and it'll give you the grip you need to get round uh, I don't like to get onto this curb it's just it's just not necessary and it would mean I have to slow the car more, like down more in the middle of the corner to get turned in tighter on the exit. Um, as you can see, I, I used some of this exit curb, but it wasn't it wasn't critical. Um, it's more about timing when you get on the power, uh, so that you don't have to come off it again. As you can see, I had a slight tiny correction there, just a confidence lift, uh, but I actually wouldn't have needed it. It was just to make sure I stayed on. Um, and coming up to this kink. At least in this car, uh, on, on Max Wing, which I'm running right now, it's just about flat. On fresh tyres, that is. I, I suppose if you were on older tyres, it wouldn't be. But the, the key thing is you need to avoid this inside curb. You can see I get right up to it, but I don't get it. Um, and then I'm just about on the limit on the exit. And the reason behind that is this curb sort of angled upwards. So it 
pushes the car out just a little bit if you hit it. Uh, and at this high speed, you've got so much aerodynamic grip that you don't need to do that. Uh, you just lose a bit of... Like, it pushes the car out wide, so you lose a bit of track position. And then you end up too wide and you don't get on before the end of the kerb. Um, and even if you do, you can get away with that uh, without getting off track. But with the way the grass is now in iRacing, racing, it will slow your ex slow your exit down just a bit if you go onto it. Uh, so it's it's faster to just avoid this inside kerb. And then, as you can see, I don't need to use any of the grass on the exit. And then just doesn't hurt my speed at all coming onto this straight. Then for this corner, this one's also quite tricky. I find I find it a bit deceivingly tight. Um, so we've got the four and the three board here. I'm looking at the three, but again, braking just a bit before it. So I'm see I'm on the brakes now, just about halfway between the four and the three boards. But the three is absolutely my reference. That's where my eyes are looking before I pick my braking point. Uh, and I'm just judging my distance, my proximity to that three uh, as to when I start braking. So this one's again down from fifth to second. Uh, you've got to get all this inside curve. But then I find that it's almost like there's a lack of grip on the exit. So you've got to be quite progressive with the power. And you can see I pick up the throttle, full throttle now. Um, and this is another one where this has got a particularly wide exit curb. But again, you can't quite get away with using all of it because you wouldn't make it back in time uh, by the end of by the abrupt ending of it. So just make sure you take some of it to carry some more exit speed, but not too much that you can't get back in time. Uh, then just moving across the right-hand side here, this one I was finding just about nearly flat <laughs> um, you can see I had just another one of them tiny confidence lifts just here down to maybe 90% 85% throttle um, just as we come over the apex and that was that probably was necessary otherwise I might have ended up on this grass here and you wouldn't get an off track straight away but it would bounce the car a bit further wide and then you'd be struggling to get back to the left for the final corner and speaking of which for this one I'm, I'm looking at this different coloured tarmac line um, and I find you, you can brake on the line but it's easier and it's easier to set up a good exit which is quite important because you're heading onto the main pit straight uh, which is probably well I don't want to say it's the longest straight on the track because I don't actually know but it possibly is the longest straight on the track so it's still important um, so I'm braking just before the, the, the change in tarmac you can see here it's roughly in line with this line that, that lines up with this three board as well if you prefer that and then letting the car wash out all the way wide, just touching this outside kerb a little bit, and then trying to get into this inside kerb. And again, this is another one which I find is deceptively tight on the exits. So you've just got to delay maybe slightly more than you think uh, in terms of getting back on the power. It's the third gear corner, so it's quite easy to get the traction in this car. Uh, and then with this one, you can actually get away with using all of this exit kerb, so you definitely should, because you want to really try and maximize your exit onto this straight. But yeah. That, uh, that brings us back to the start finish and concludes the lap. So there we go, that was the full lap guide around Road America for the BMW GT3. Um, the key thing I would say this week, with this track in particular, uh, it's more a track thing than a car thing, is just trying to maximize the track width where you can on the exits where there's those widened curbs, trying to get the hang of how much you can use of them just to carry all that extra speed uh, without running too wide. I think that's the key thing for this week. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in to another Coach Dave Academy Lab Guide. Um, of course, we do these every week for a variety of different cars. Uh, just check out the YouTube channel uh, for everything we do regarding lap guides. Um, and if you need to know anything more regarding coaching or the setup service we provide, just check out the Discord or the website and you'll find everything you need there. Uh, but for now, that's it from me. So I will see you in the next one.